Insights with Terry Coots, a weekly look through the eyes of predictive astrologer Terry Coots. Here's Terry. Hi, everybody. This is Terry, and you're listening to Insights with Terry Coots. I am so grateful that you've joined me, and I'm going to talk this week about October the 31st through November the 6th. Now, I don't need to tell you that the 31st is Halloween. I'm actually doing this on the 30th. Uh, there's a reason for it. The 30th is the day that um, we're having Mars go retrograde. And that's a really big thing. It's a big energy. So I want to talk about what's going on for us this week in, as far as energy goes and some of the ways it will affect us and how we can survive it and maybe even be better for it because of it. Halloween is the day of the dead, All Souls Day. So this thinning veil, it gooses me out, I have to admit. Uh, even when I was a kid, there was a feeling to me with Halloween and I cannot watch any of those horror stories. I used to love horror stories, all those movies. As I get older, it's just a little too close to the truth. So, Handmaid's Tale. So I am careful what I put in my brain as I get older because that's what keeps me up at night. So this this Day of the Dead, uh, which will be Monday, this is a very thin veil. So if you wanted to maybe remember somebody that you lost, it's an appropriate time for that if you wanted to just remember or if you wanted to make contact or invite them maybe to share a walk with you or share a meal. If you've lost a creature that you love, um, I have many dogs that I've had to let go of and that's a day that I try to spend a little bit of time remembering each one and what I loved about them. It, there is pain attached to it, I have to say, because I, you never get over the pain of being separated physically uh, from someone or something, but um, are we really? And if, if you entertain the thought of reincarnation, uh, there is a, a communication, a little bit of a highway there that we can um, maybe jump on and work to make some communication here. So honor, if you can, the people that you've lost, think of them as happily as you can try to sort out all the good times, the things that make made and make you joyful in the remembering of them. And understand and embrace the fact that rebirth always follows death. So as a farm person, I'm acutely aware of that. We may lose the mother cow, but the baby is there to go on. Actually, my border collie, I lost her, Chewy, um, 15 years ago plus, I, it's like she's still with me. I, I, it's so vivid, her memory. She passed uh, 24 hours after her pups were born. It was a pulmonary embolism that took her. And so I bottle fed her puppies and I had to make the transition of knowing that I was going to be left with these puppies, but not the one that I truly loved, which was Chewy. So I had to grow into the love of these puppies. Now, those puppies uh, are 15 years old. Actually, I only have one left. Um, one of them went out to a friend in British Columbia, and he passed uh, about two years ago. Uh, she was heartbroken when she lost him. I was fortunate and kept Cutter and Smudge um, up until uh, Cutter left me in May and it was very quick and nothing's ever hard when you lose your best friend and he left his sister behind and I still have the grace and the benefit of her company. Now here's something weird I'm going to share with you. It's not weird, it's part of my life, but I'm going to share this with you at the risk of looking weird or sounding weird. These last three days, as I take Smudge for a walk with me, now bear in mind I have, uh, at this moment in time, I have 13 dogs. I'm down in, in dogs. Um, and 
uh, her and Cutter, her brother, were so close. Now, I was always the primary focus for the two of them, but oh my God, they loved each other. And she counted on him to protect and defend her and keep her on the straight and narrow. He was a beautiful, beautiful soul, as she is, but very different, both of them. And when he passed, she struggled, of course, 15 years living with your brother. You've never been separated from them. And I thought I might lose her, too, of a broken heart. So I tried to impact her life differently. I tried to get her to go for rides with me again, um, just doing things to try to distract her, and nothing worked. Well, then we decided that she wanted to be a greeter dog. So uh, that's what she loves. She greets my clients as they come in for their readings. Her tail is wagging. Everybody makes a big fuss over her. And she feels like she's productive and a contributing member to the pack. And it's just her. She's the only one allowed to do this. So she's found her joy again. Well, the last three days as I've taken them for walks in the bush because the weather has been absolutely beautiful, she stopped, as she always used to do and hasn't done since he's gone, to wait for him. He was always the last one out of the bush. He never wanted to come out of the bush. He just could have stayed out there forever. And she would wait halfway from the bush to my house and I would wait for her because she always worried about him as he worried about her. She hadn't done that since he passed because I did let her see his body and she was part of the ritual that we have as a pack to bury our animals together. We all take part in it. Just one human, me, and all the dogs. And she accepted the fact that he was gone. She, animals understand death. Well, um, she hasn't looked for him in the bush. I mean, I know she'd carried him in her heart with a sadness, but she hadn't stopped and looked. The last three days coming out of the bush, she stopped. She saw something. She waited for something. Now, I wasn't privy to it, sad to say, for me. Usually I can... I don't know, I can be part of these things a little bit more clearly. This was just between her and him. And I think they wanted it that way. So she waited for him and I know he arrived. I could tell by her body language, her tail was swinging. He was beside her in spirit, walking back to the house. I could tell by her body language. I couldn't see it, I could feel it. So this thinning of the veil isn't just for us. It's for the animals as well. So with this, take advantage of thinking of your ancestors or things that you've lost and see if you can make that connection yourself and maybe share uh, with all of us what, uh, what um, experience you might have had or maybe keep it to yourself. That's, you know, that's your choice. So what we have is that Mars retrograde and Mars going retrograde uh, today, which is the 30th, is a powerful, powerful energy. It is in Gemini. And uh, it, when Mars goes retrograde, it's the planet of energy. It's the planet of passion. It's the planet of action, motivation. Retrograde is retro, going backwards. So some of you, not all of you, depends on your birth chart. Some of you may feel more sluggish, not have that action. It's retro and not feeling as motivated, not feeling as passionate about the things that you love, not feeling the energy. So you may be extra sensitive to energy that's around you. You may feel that sluggishness and take time uh, it within this. It's going to last for a little while, <laughs> but take time with this and see if you can take the time to recharge your batteries. Everybody recharges their batteries a little differently. It may be that you just want to sit and read a book. Or for me, it's training the dogs. I've taken the time out to disconnect mentally and spiritually from other things. My book work, my having to get the recordings out. Um, and I just connect with the dogs and recharge my batteries by training uh, modules. I just do some training with each individual dog. With all of these dogs, even though they're senior, I have an 18-year-old. I have a 15-year-old, and I have a number of 11 and 12-year-olds, and then I have puppies. Um, so training all of them, five minutes each, just 
makes my mood way high and we're playing because our training is playing it we don't train with negative reinforcement we train with happy toys and happy food so do something that makes you feel alive makes you feel motivated you may have to uh, do something that's contraindicated for the sluggishness and if you're just so sluggish then take the time take the time listen to your body if you need to rest, rest. If you need to pause, pause. If you need to conserve your energy, do that. And you may need to look at your energy the way you look at your money, which is how are you spending your energy? Are you talking on the phone to somebody that is not somebody that you wanted to talk to and you've just lost an hour? Um, could you be doing multitasking while you're talking to this person? Could you peel the potatoes? Could you dust? Uh, do you want to? Do you want to sit and concentrate? That's something that you have to decide. Uh, what, what would work for me? How am I spending my energy? And is it a wise investment for me? Now we're approaching that blood moon. I did talk tiny, tiny little bit about it last week. And uh, thanks to Charlie O'Brien, he has archived our um, about four or five of these sessions on the website www.terryworld.com so if you've missed one or two or three or four <laughs> you can go back and fill yourself in and that's on November the 8th as I said uh, that's a very powerful uh, exchange of energy we're going to talk about that next week a little bit more that blood moon uh, but we're in the middle of eclipses so that's a gateway so we just finished one on the 25th and we're moving towards this one on November the 8th. So some of you can feel very sensitive. We can feel things heightened. Uh, maybe all our nerves are running up and down the outside of our clothes. Be aware of what you're feeling. Be in the moment if you can. And, and uh, if it's irritating, know that you could flash. Because Mars is a fire sign. So this gateway uh, between the two... Uh, again, encourages that veil being thin and allows us to, as I said earlier, connect with our ancestors. But it's a galactic energy that offers us so many things, understanding the cycles of, the, of what we've been working with, birth and death, uh, rebirth, uh, how, how do I look at my life, uh, rebirthing maybe new friends, uh, losing some friends that we wanted to lose or or just isn't growing corn for us anymore so all these big big changes that have come in so many lives now that scorpio energy is still above it. it's a scorpio in the sun sign it's scorpio and mercury which is how we think how we process things how how we work with things mentally that's scorpio as i said and venus the planet of love beauty attraction that's in scorpio scorpio is a very psychic energy field so what we may find with that is a opportunity as challenging as it is to dive deep and try to find ourselves try to understand ourselves try to understand other people find out what our patterns are so that we can encourage them or discourage them that's up to us how do you look at your life the beginning of the week we may have some issues if you're vulnerable with backbone joints your knees especially the knees so if you do have vulnerability in that area be careful be conscious and take care of them so for myself personally I do have knees I have to be very loving with and I do have a lower back issue so I know this is coming so I've already started the turmeric I've already started rubbing the joints with pine coconut oil and black pepper it uh, it's an anti-inflammatory uh, knee braces there you see I'm 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 <laughs> confessing so I'll put my knee braces on ahead of time I will maybe if I feel a twinge put my back brace on just so I don't have to go down that road prevention 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 then as the week progresses it may go from that to our ankles the calves uh, your Achilles heel so if you're if you're vulnerable in that area just be careful the thyroid may be an issue so if you have thyroid 
uh, issues or hormone imbalance, that could be a problem. So that's your vulnerable energy fields. Then as we get to your Thursday and Friday, it'll go right to your feet, your toes. Now remember the moon on Thursday moves into Pisces, Pisces being a psychic energy field, Scorpio, 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 a psychic energy field. And then we've got, we're moving from Halloween, um, all that pressure to open up that pineal gland to be intuitive, to be aware, to encourage our intuitiveness, our um, psychic ability, our sensitivities to understand, to hear, to know, to get the signals. All of that is just like a tsunami for us. And if you're not aware of it, we can wonder what is going on. Be aware of your friends. If any of them wrestle with depression or extreme sadness, even yourself, we will be fighting it during the Scorpio time. It's heavy. It's ruled by Pluto. It can be heavy. I talked about that in the last podcast as well. So you might want to just refresh yourself if you'd like. Go back to the week of the 23rd to the 30th of October. So we want to pay attention to that. Try again to work on things that, that excite you. That's why I've started a little bit more training games with my dogs. I love doing it. I love to see my puppies progress. The old dogs like to refresh and everybody's happy. Tails are wagging. We're throwing balls. They're retrieving. They're sit down, go around. Attention soldier, leave it. Don't touch. Yeah, go get it. Get the wub up. Bring it back. So all of that. Go over the A-frame. Go through the tunnel. Come on back. So all of them are having fun. I'm encouraging their brain to think more and I'm immersed in just tail wagging. Uh, so try to do something that just makes you feel good. The weather has been our friend up until now. I think we've had one rainy day. Um, so now the number that was pulled, this is interesting to me. This is so interesting to me. Coincidences are not coincidences. The number in numerology that came very strong was 11. And it hadn't occurred to me. As I was doing the podcast for you, I looked at November, which is the 11th month and the first day. So that's 11, 111. So that's a code. So if you want to Google 11, if you want to Google the code 111, I think you're going to find some very interesting information. Google does those angel numbers, so don't be afraid to take advantage of uh, reading it for yourself and, and taking your own message, your own signal that the universe is offering you. What I know about 11 and 111 is it is an awakening. And we are supposed to be, we're being called, we're supposed to be looking for patterns and at patterns. It's angel numbers, it really is. So number 11 uh, can symbolize ambition and intelligence. It supports us in achieving success in what we've, what we've uh, strived to do. But if we haven't made a goal, as I've been barking about all year, that we needed to goal set, it can also be a time of great failure. It can be a time of visions. So many people have visions. Um, and it can be in different ways. It could be as you're just falling asleep, as you're waking up, maybe when you're daydreaming. Don't discount them. There may be some very, very inspirational information in there. And it could be from your source. We'll need patience and balance from that Libra energy that we're coming out and determination. Because the sensitive creative energy of number one one. We need to learn to correctly evaluate our emotions and even with that Scorpio energy, look at some of our traumatic experiences. Now that's not easy, kids. Um, you know, we bury these things pretty deep. That's what Scorpio and Pluto do. They, they, they make us, to transform us, deal with that, to look at that, to muddy the waters, to get to the bottom of all that murk so we can rise to the surface. Some of us have spent a lot of time burying that so that water is clear, but the murk is underneath and we do have to muddy that up to get to where we are. So watch for yourself. Some of the weaknesses of 11 is impatience, maybe misapprehensions, a hardness. There can be misunderstandings. We can be put into very stressful situations and a very 
unstable material life. Even if we're not experiencing it, we see it in other people and that scares us. So we've got to be careful not to use some of our abilities um, for just accumulating wealth. We have to look at what is this life here for us. So there's a lot of power in this. So just don't be afraid to Google that, that code, 111 or 11, because that's the number that was given to us. So I thank you very much for spending this time and, and um, sharing this information and letting me share it with you. And I thank, from the bottom of my heart, Charlie O'Brien, who has made it possible because he puts this on Spotify, Amazon Music, iTunes, uh, I, let's see what else, uh, uh, SoundCloud, and uh, YouTube. And YouTube is one of my favorites because I can actually connect with it because I don't know how to do Spotify and all the others. So thanks to Charlie, our digital guru, because without him, nothing would be here. And if you would like a reading for yourself, don't be afraid to contact me. You can text or phone 519-726-6699, or you can email me at terry, T-E-R-R-I dot coots, C-O-U-T-T-S at gmail.com. And you can go to the website that Charlie has created, www.terryworld.com, and take advantage of some of the archived podcasts. Thanks again. Have a wonderful week. And hopefully we'll connect again for next week's podcast. Bye for now, everyone. You've been listening to Insights with Terry Coots. And visit her website, terryworld.com. T-E-R-R-I world.com. And we'll catch you next time 